Could we see a big shadow drop game for the Switch from Nintendo in 2024 amongst all us fans waiting for them to officially communicate something that we don't already know? We know their release schedule up to this point in time has us waiting for Endless Ocean Luminous out on May 2nd. Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door out in that same month on the 23rd, and Luigi's Mansion 2 HD out on June 27th. And so far this year, we've seen another Code Recollection, which is a collection of a DS and Wii game, or in remaster, if you will. We've seen Mario vs. Donkey Kong for the Nintendo Switch, a Game Boy Advance reimagining or remake, and we've also seen Princess Peach Showtime, the one game that is actually technically a fresh brand new title from Nintendo. I guess Endless Ocean Luminous is too. It's been brought to my attention that that's not a remake. I was thinking it was a remake the whole time. It's actually not. It's like the third installment in Endless Ocean, but you get the idea. Not many first party published Nintendo games this year are a fresh experience. They are actually something that has been rehashed, which is always the strategy we see Nintendo use towards the end of a console's life cycle anyway, so we really should expect them to stick to something more heavily port and remaster focused, and that's where the idea of a shadow drop announcement that happens anytime between now and even as late as at the Nintendo Direct comes into play because if you look at history with the most recent directs dating all the way back to February 2023 when we saw Metroid Prime 1 remastered that started to set something of a precedent that Nintendo drops some kind of first party title at each of their Nintendo Direct presentations and I also would say that it's not out of the realm of possibility that they just drop it as a Twitter announcement one day because we've seen them do that with Kirby's Dream Buffet amongst some other titles that I'm forgetting the names of right now but you get the idea they can can go off script and just surprise announce and drop a game at any time or they could roll it into the direct if that lines up with their marketing timeline. In June of 2023, we saw Pikmin 1 and 2 as the surprise shadow drop announcement where you could download it that day from the eShop and the physical edition would be coming out later on. That was the same thing that happened for Metroid Prime Remastered. And then we got F-099 at the September Nintendo Direct in 2023. So all of their 2023 first party directs did have a shadow drop experience of some type, a game that you could go hop into right then that day once the presentation was over. And while I am holding out some level of hope that the shadow drop announcement for a first party game might happen between now and something like a June Nintendo Direct, I would say if you want to temper your expectations and keep them a little bit more on the safe side of things, I would just wait until that Direct is here in order for us to actually get any kind of hopes up for a shadow drop because I'm more expecting it to show up at that presentation than not. Although we have seen Nintendo go off script before and just do some kind of social media announcement to reveal a game. But then the question becomes, what might said game be? Well, there are some outstanding rumors about ports and remasters that we don't have on the Nintendo Switch, and I am of the mindset that if we do see a Shadow Drop announcement, it will likely be a port or remaster. We already talked about how much of their games lineup for the Switch in 2024 is exactly that, and I don't think that they're going to Shadow Drop a big game that needs more marketing and explanations around it. They're going to drop some classics that fans want to see re-released, but they already know what they are. And the first games in in question that could potentially be a bundle pack is none other than Metroid Prime 2 and 3. And the reason I'm saying bundle pack and the reason I'm thinking that these are once again a shadow drop game, one, we saw them do that with Metroid Prime 1 Remastered in terms of it being a shadow drop, and it would kind of make sense in the marketing lead up for, for Metroid Prime 4 for Nintendo to kind of stick to the script on that, since the ultimate goal is just for those games to be playable for us Nintendo fans ahead of Metroid Prime 4's release, and this would be a big milestone in the marketing campaign lead up to Metroid Prime 4, and the outstanding rumor from the same sources that we're talking about Metroid Prime 1 Remastered being done and ready to go long Long before we saw the official announcement from Nintendo, the claim was is that Metroid Prime 1 was getting the big boy treatment, quote unquote, with reworked visuals, reworked textures and lighting. And we, of course, saw them ultimately do that. But the claim was is that Prime 2 and 3 are not getting that same level of a remaster. Now, the controls and things might be just as, as comparable as Metroid Prime 1 
remastered, but they very well could be more of an HD up-res. Picture Pikmin 1 and 2 and how those were released as a bundle pack for the Nintendo Switch, also as a shadow drop, as we mentioned. Well, it may be more akin to that, where the visuals very much still look like the GameCube style visuals, just up-res to a modern 1080p resolution when docked in 720p or less in handheld, and that's kind of what I'm expecting for Prime 2 and 3, and that's also the reason I think there is a possibility of Nintendo releasing those in a bundle pack together for something like a $60 price point, because we're getting a ton of gameplay out of those, but they weren't the sales juggernaut, and I shouldn't even say Prime 1 was necessarily a sales juggernaut, but they didn't even uh, perform up to Prime 1's level as far as the sales of each of those games, and Nintendo may have just wanted to spend that additional time for the big breakout title, the most successful Metroid game ever pr prior to Metroid Dread, which was Metroid Prime 1 on the GameCube, I am kind of in the mindset that we're going to see a more simple treatment for these games due to that rumor. And also, I could see Nintendo pulling something like that. All of that said, obviously, I hope I'm wrong. I would love to see the same kind of visual fidelity that we saw for Prime 1 Remastered that I still think is one of the best looking Nintendo Switch games ever released. Obviously, I want to see that for Prime 2 and 3, but I'm trying not to expect it. Now, the next set of games that could indeed come over as a stopgap and I don't necessarily believe as much that these could be shadow dropped. They might, but I also know that with a fan base like Zelda, you probably want to give fans some time to pre-order things. There's a lot of physical Zelda collectors out there that don't want to buy it off the eShop and want to have a physical edition day one. And we are, of course, talking about the long outstanding rumors that suggest that Wind Waker and or Twilight Princess have been done and ready to go for the Nintendo Switch for quite some time. And Nintendo's just sitting on these games. Those are rumbling that sources like Andy Robinson over at VGC and Jeff Grubb have heard that yeah, Nintendo's just sitting on these finished products and we know that they do that. These are interesting games because they got released for the Wii U, but you know what the Wii U's total system sales look like and they never really got the opportunity to be sold to such a broad audience that would likely adopt these classic 3D Zelda games like they could on the Switch with only 13 million units sold on the Wii U. These are fantastic games. They're, they're fantastic ports and remasters of the originals, but they were brought over to the wrong console, unfortunately. And is Nintendo in the mindset of, well, we already tried to remaster those and they sold well for the install base size that we did, but now we have to wait even longer because we've already tried to give them a, a shot at re-releasing them. So now let's work on other games before that. That could be their mindset, or they could do what they did with just about every other Wii U game and just bring it over and maybe give us some extra content with us or some extra bonus features, but just bring over that same game that's essentially already done and looks up to the standard that it needs to and easily port it over and it's simple money for Nintendo and fans want it. So the jury's still out on whether or not we'll ever actually see those games, but I definitely do think that there is a solid shot that Nintendo will choose to bring over Wind Waker and Twilight Princess. I'm just now conflicted on if that is a end of Switch life cycle type of stopgap game, maybe even the 2024 holiday games, or are they something that is used to launch and bolster the launch lineup of their next gen console? I could see them going either way and I could even see them potentially doing something as massive as a shadow drop for them, although I am less expecting that and more expecting some kind of marketing ramp up to those game re-releases. But imagine a Wind Waker and Twilight Princess combo pack shadow drop for 60 or even 100 bucks. Charge me whatever you want, Nintendo. I want those games playable on the Switch. That's just how I feel about it. But there is also a very big reality that we get them one at a time and not both together. And I'm kind of in that mindset that Nintendo may end up handling it that way. The last game that I think could be a perfect candidate candidate for a shadow drop release to the fan base is F-Zero. F-Zero GX specifically, we see a lot of support and love from Nintendo around F-Zero 99 right now, and we don't have any easily playable modern day F-Zero game on the Switch at all. And this is another franchise that while it was never a sales juggernaut, it really has never been shown to such a broad user base that the Nintendo Switch has. And I would argue that Mario Kart, while it's the juggernaut that it is for Nintendo's big racing game on the Switch, if you have a racing audience and they're at least kind of in the mindset, granted Mario Kart and F-Zero play very differently, don't get me wrong, but the concept of trying to win and finish the race at number one remains the same. Why would you not try to cross promote some of that audience, one of the classics like F-Zero GX from the GameCube and bring it over, up-res it, give it some modernized controls, give it a few quality of life improvements 
and resell it to this large user base and see how it does. That way you can see if you have an opportunity to bring back F-Zero in a big way with a fresh new installment. And this is actually the type of game that I could see Nintendo just being radio silent on. And one day we wake up to a social media announcement where F-Zero GX is coming out today and you can download it right now. And the physical edition will be out in a couple weeks or this could very well be easily worked into a Nintendo Direct Shadow Drop announcement. And I just think there's a ton of potential with this particular title, and I don't necessarily think it'll blow away anyone in sales numbers, but it may give Nintendo just that pulse of what they need to see as far as the F-Zero fan base still being alive and well, and a broader audience giving it a chance for the first time. And just think about 30 player online multiplayer. That, that in and of itself would be incredible. And Nintendo can pull it off on the Switch, and it's an easy one to pick from the library of classic a GameCube games, so I am hopeful we maybe see that shadow dropped at some point in the future. There are many other games we could go down the list of Kid Icarus Uprising, something Star Fox, a Porter remaster. I could see a lot of different series getting some more love, even Luigi's Mansion one like why are we getting two we're literally getting luigi's mansions released backwards essentially like we're, we had three on the switch then we're going to go to two and then now we're just missing one for me being easily playable so something like that would be a cool shadow drop as well maybe they do it pikmin one and two style where it's a more simple project but it's just like available at a direct so Lots of different possibilities, but that's really where I want to hear from you guys at this point in the video. How do you feel about Nintendo and the likelihood of them shadow dropping an additional game this year in 2024? And do you think we might see something between now and the supposed June time Nintendo Direct? Or do you think that the soonest we will see anything shadow drop from them will be at the Nintendo Direct? Or do you think that was a 2023 trend for Nintendo and maybe they don't continue the shadow drop strategy for games, period? But regardless of your thoughts and feelings on everything we talked about today, I do look forward to hearing from you all in the comments comments down below before we leave the video as I do look forward to getting a back and forth conversation started with you all around these topics. Go watch the video on screen next if you haven't already. Also make sure you like, subscribe, turn your notification bell, and I will see you guys in the next video.